This week at the University of Rhode Island. Theft on Campus, why you should never leave your items unattended in the library. A taste of the past, a roundtable talk with World War II veterans on campus. A senior football player who made his mark on and off the field. And the start to the 2017-18 men's basketball season. All of that and more on this week's Five Cent Cigar Newscast. I'm Jessica Pace. And hello everybody, I'm Stone Freeman. Theft is the most common crime on college campuses. In 2014, according to the National Center for Education Statistics, there were 13,500 thefts reported on school grounds throughout the country. The number one item stolen? Electronic devices. The reports of student items being stolen on campus have increased this semester. Five Cent Cigars' Nikki Laterulo is live outside the library and has more on why students should never leave their belongings unattended there. Nikki? As the semester progresses, the reports of stolen laptops and other personal items on campus have been increasing. I spoke with students inside Carothers Library about how safe they feel while studying. Thousands of students bustle in and out of the URI campus library daily, often having to get up and complete small tasks. But when they return, sometimes what they left is no longer there. A community message last week. Uh, we've had some recent larcenies over at the library that we're concerned about. Um, you know, people get up, they, they take a break from study, and, and, and some of their personal belongings get taken. Theft in the library has become a big issue this semester, and students are shocked. Well, I'm at the library all week, usually four times a week, and I'm always getting up to go to the bathroom, go to the printer, and I think it's really scary that I have to be concerned if my laptop is going to be back when I get there. The school has recognized this problem and is trying to find a solution to prevent it. Well, I think it's pretty unfair. I just think they need to crack down a little bit with the URI police and uh, kind of figure out the whole situation because I see it happening a lot. I see police officers walking around, but it seems like no one's really fixing it. I was on the third floor the other day and there's a cop patrolling around. He was uh, coming up to inv individual students and making sure that no one left their things in attendance. And URI campus police are urging all students, faculty and staff to keep your belongings secured at all times. Whether you're studying in the union, the dining hall or the library, do not leave your items unattended. Reporting in Kingston, Nikki Laterulo, Five Cent Cigar News. Plans have been announced for a new bike path that will run through the university's campus. The path will run from West Alumni Ave, behind Meade Stadium, between Billbeck Field and Boss Ice Arena, and out across Peckham Farm where it will connect with the current William C. O'Neill bike path. The new path will feature a plaza near Mackle Fieldhouse that can be used as a gathering location and will contain bike racks, a bike repair station, and a bus stop for Ripta Connection. Construction on the path is set to begin in the spring and is expected to be finished by the fall of 2018. A Taste of the Past, a public relations class held a round table talk with World War II veterans where they shared their experience. Our Madeline Schulte has more. World War II veterans shared some of their stories last week at URI's Visitor Center at an event that was hosted by Professor Regina Bell and her public relations class. We want to give our students the opportunity for, for real world experiments, for, to, to be part of something that's real, that's happening. And, boy, it didn't get any better with Tim Gray and the World War II Foundation. Professor Bell collaborated with Tim Gray, director of the World War II Foundation, to assemble a roundtable discussion between students and veterans. It was also to shed light on Tim's newest film, Journey Home to the USS Arizona. Students and I, really, we, we were on the fringe, and we, we watched Tim launch his premiere. So students formed a social media team and, and they tweeted and they maintained a Facebook presence for him. Between social media and marketing the event, Professor Bell and her students were able to support Tim and educate students on World War II. I'm Madeline Schulte with Five Cent Cigar News. This past week, the URI Alumni Association held its sixth annual Nearly Naked Mile. Students donated stuff and ran in the buff. All participants donated two items of clothing. The annual walk and run demonstrates the challenges faced by more than 4,000 homeless people across Rhode Island who do not have the appropriate clothing for cold temperatures in the fall and winter seasons. And now, a look at your sports. 
Playing for URI Athletics is great because teams are D1, allowing players the experience of a lifetime. Now imagine yourself in your senior year and getting news an injury will affect your last season. This happened to a football player at URI. Sierra Bishop has more on his impact on the team. Senior linebacker Ezra Holmes' season has been cut short due to a pectoralis major injury. Now that his injury has impacted his game, his role as a leader has been relied on more. Uh, as a on the team, being a senior, you have to be a leader for all the younger guys. So I know a lot of the freshmen, they don't really know what's going on, so you got to help them. Um, you got to be a role model, basically, for everyone to look up to. And the coaches are depending on you. Uh, so when the coaches aren't there, when we're in lift and everything, you have to make sure everybody stays on task. So basically being the prime leaders on the team. From being an essential player on the defense to now being someone the younger players look up to, junior free safety DJ Stewart shines a light on how Ezra impacts the team. Ezra has a huge impact to our team, one, because of his experience, two, because he's, he's elder, he's a leader. Um, we look up to him in certain ways of the team, like him making big plays for us on the football field, or him just as in his schoolwork what to do and what not to do. Holmes' double major in human development and education embodies one component of why he has grown to the man he is today. School, so I went to boarding school. Um, so hopefully I could go back to one of the boarding schools and teach because you can live on campus, you can coach, and you can be one of the, like, the house dads. Holmes wants to be someone his students can look up to one day. But more specifically, Holmes hopes to instill that diversity is something that should be celebrated. I want to be that person that kids can look up to. So when I was growing up, I didn't have a black male teacher. And so I wanted to be that, that teacher in other kids' lives that they really can relate to, I guess, in the school aspect. This is Sierra Bishop, Five Cent Cigar News. Last Friday night was the first game of the URI men's basketball season, and Dan Hurley's Rams opened up the year at the Ryan Center. Five Cent Cigar's Margot Gagnon has more. The Rams started off their season on a high note at the Ryan Center last Friday night, beating UNC Asheville 84-60 in front of the largest opening night crowd in Ryan Center history. URI led for all but 11 seconds in the game, starting it off with an 8-2 run. Senior Stanford Robinson led the team in points, scoring 18 points off the bench in the season opener for the Rams. After the game, head coach Dan Hurley spoke to the media about the game and his team's performance. And I, I was, uh, that's a good team we played. Obviously, uh, our pressure, um, our pressure bothered them. 27 turnovers. I, mean, I thought we got, you know, lackadaisical, especially start the second half and at times in terms of just giving up a couple of easy baskets, which, you know, we started playing to the score a little bit. But um, I think we showed our depth. The Rams' defensive play proved big in the win over UNC Asheville. They were able to force 27 turnovers, which resulted in 28 points for the team. The Rams play again this Sunday at 1 p.m. against Holy Cross at the Ryan Center. In Kingston, Margot Gagnon, 5 Cent Cigar News. Finally, the ruckus is starting to rumble again. Yeah, you know, I get a good feeling about this year, but of course the Rams are going to have to go without E.C. Matthews for four to six weeks, but should be back for Atlantic 10 play. I have high hopes. That's all we have for you this week. For more on these stories and everything you need to know this week, visit RhodeyCigar.com. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. I'm Stone Freeman. And I'm Jessica Pace. Thanks for watching and have a great week, everyone.